Hey everyone, welcome to my channel where I give bookkeeping and tax tips to entrepreneurs and small business owners. My name is Christian Brooks. I am the owner of Brooks Bookkeeping and Accounting Services, a bookkeeping and tax service that aims to empower and educate women of color entrepreneurs and small business owners on their business finances and taxes. I have a video for you all today on how to track your rental property income and expenses in Excel. So I wanted to bring you all this video because I have have quite a few clients who have rental properties and I gave them this spreadsheet for them to track their rental income and expenses and it has been extremely helpful for them and being able to kind of see how much money they're bringing in how much money is going out the door when it comes to their rental properties but it's also been really helpful for me in filing their taxes because I have all of the numbers that I need right in front of me so I'm just gonna tell you all how to set up your spreadsheets if you are using Excel to track your rental income and expenses. So uh, first of all, the one thing that you do not want to do, you don't wanna just write out your transactions. What do I mean when I say that? Let's say January 1st of 2023, I received rent of $1,800. I, I pay utilities. The utilities were $200. I got snow removal. That was $100. Okay, so on and so forth. Okay, and then let's say that you didn't pay anything else in January, but then February comes up. So February, you got, again, you got rent for $1,800, whatever, so on and so forth. Okay, so you don't really want to set your spreadsheet up like this. There's nothing wrong with you keeping track of your transactions, but you want to have the total numbers. What do I mean by total numbers? You want to know the total amount of money that you got in January. You want to know the total amount of money that you spent in January so that you can arrive at your net income. This sheet is not going to tell you that. So instead, make sure you are setting your spreadsheet up like this, where you have rent, and you have any expenses that you have. Now, if I paid 250 in utilities in January, if I paid $100 in repairs, um, maybe I got some snow removal for $100, and then my property management company cost $150. Well, I know down here, I spent $600 right because it tells me my total expenses for january was six hundred dollars now let's put the rent of eighteen hundred dollars so i had a, in a net income of twelve hundred dollars this is the number that you want right you want to have these totals your total income your total expenses so that you can arrive at your net income you know how much you're profiting if you are just writing out your transactions like this, you don't actually know how much you're profiting. You'll have to kind of go through with a calculator or use a separate spreadsheet or, or do some, um, some calculations over here in order to figure that out. Whereas if you set it up like this, all you have to do, put the stuff in, scroll down, bam, here you go. And then you'll do that for the rest of the year. So you'll do that for January, February, whatever, whatever, whatever. And notice that I only have rent on here one time. If you set your spreadsheet up like this, when you are trying to calculate how much you received in rent for the year, you'll have to like go through and find all of the rent transactions that you had. It's just not, it's not helpful setting up your spreadsheet like this. You want to make sure that you have your, your accounts, right? The accounts that you are, that you, you normally use for your income. So for in this instance, that will be rent at the top and then the accounts that you have for your expenses at the bottom. And then you will put the, the transactions here under the month when they happened. So in February, if you receive $1,800 in rent, you would put the $1,800 in February and so on and so forth. But this is also gonna be helpful to your tax person because as a tax professional, I am looking at this number right here. I need the yearly totals. 
I do not have time to go through a spreadsheet and be looking through, okay, well, this is how much she received in rent in January. Let me add that up. Okay, February, let me add that up. I don't have time for that. I would prefer to see these numbers because these are the numbers that are going to be going on your tax return, right? Not these individual numbers. These individual numbers like your individual uh, income total in January, your individual expense total in January, net income in January. Those are numbers that are more so helpful for you as the, the property owner so that you can gauge the profitability of the property. You can gauge if you're spending too much money in, um, in some area or whatever have you. But these numbers, this yearly total, this is what is going to go on your tax return. So when you give this sheet to your tax professional or whatever spreadsheet you create, make sure that you are creating a yearly total column where everything is being summed up to make things easier for your tax professional. Okay. But then also when you are setting up your, um, your spreadsheet, I highly recommend that you go to the schedule E when you are writing out the accounts for your expenses. So let's open up the schedule E right now. The schedule E is going to give you a list of expenses that you can write off for your rental property. Now, uh, this is not an exhaustive list. There are other expenses that you can write off as well, but this is gonna be helpful for you in terms of setting up your spreadsheet and again, making things easier for your tax professional. So under legal and professional fees, keep in mind that you can write off your tax preparation fees for your rental property. So whatever fees that you pay uh, your tax professional in order to file your taxes, you can write that off under legal and professional fees. Um, you have management fees, uh, mortgage interest paid, other interests, repair, supplies, taxes, utility, uh, depreciation expense. And then again, there is, uh, there are other expenses. Like I said, this is not an exhaustive list, but it, it will be very helpful if you look at this list to see what you pay on behalf of your rental property and put that here as accounts for your expenses. Now, if you want to get more detailed, that's why you want to have a details column so you can get more specific. So let's say here we have lawn. Let's, let's change this to something that's actually on the, the schedules. Let's do cleaning and maintenance instead of lawn. Okay, so we did cleaning and maintenance instead of lawn, but we said that this $100 was for snow removal. So we'll put that in the details. The, your details is, are just gonna tell you what the transaction was for. Any details that you wanna remember. You can not put any details. You can put whatever details you want. You wanna add more stuff here, you can add more stuff here, but these are just notes for you. But again, these are going to be the, the accounts that you are, are using from the Schedule C. That's gonna make things easier for your tax professional when you're filing your taxes. If you file your own taxes, it will make things easier for you. If you have more than one property, don't put different properties on the same spreadsheet because when you are mixing up your properties, you're not going to be able to tell which property is profitable and which one isn't. For example, if I were to add another property here, so let's say rent for Dallas property, and then I put rent for PA property, okay? And then I added all of my expenses to this. So the Dallas property had 25 uh, or $250 in utilities, but the PA property has $400 in utilities. Same thing over here, $400 in utilities. And then for repairs, for some reason, we had a huge repair to our PA property. So we had to pay $1,500 for repairs to the PA property in January. Okay, snow removal, let's say uh, it's Pennsylvania, of course. So it snows way more than it snows in, in Dallas. 
So let's say we have $500 worth of snow removal. Our property management fee for the PA property is, is also $150. Now we're only receiving $1,000 in um, rent from the PA property. Well, the PA property technically operated at a loss in January. And you see it here right? It says that your net income was a negative $350. But because you are not separating these out, you don't actually know which property it is that's causing the loss. Or maybe it's both. You have no clue because these numbers are meshed together. You want to have a separate spreadsheet for each property so that you can see which properties are profitable, which ones aren't, how profitable are they? How much are you spending on the different expenses for different properties? Do you need to decrease those expenses? How much are you getting for rent? Can you increase the rent? All of that good stuff. And you can't really tell that if you are meshing all of these numbers together. So all you have to do is erase this, erase this. We're gonna go through and we're gonna get rid of all of the the Pennsylvania stuff that we added. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Getting rid of that. Getting rid of that. Okay. So now we're back down to where we were before. We have uh, $1,200 worth of net income. So if you want to add another property, you want to set up your spreadsheet like normal. You want to go down here. Copy. Bam. Now you have two copies of this spreadsheet. Now that we separated this out, we can see that it's actually the PA property that was at a loss. So in January, we operated at a loss of 1550. So with separating these out, you can see the differences in the, um, the numbers and it will help you make a better decision about your property and to keep better track of your property. And I am gonna give you all this spreadsheet. You can have this one for free or you can set up your own spreadsheet. Basically depends on what you wanna do. This is a spreadsheet that I gave to my clients so that they can um, track their income and expenses from their properties and it has been very helpful and it's also been extremely helpful for me in terms of filing their taxes and then just you in general having this entire spreadsheet knowing the amount of income you're bringing in each month knowing how much you're spending on each expense um, for the year, but then knowing the, your total expense for each month, seeing your net income, these are extremely important numbers that you need to have in general as a, um, as a business owner, because you have a rental property, but your rental property, your rental property is technically a business. So these are numbers that you need to have so that you can make informed decisions for your, um, for your business. Alrighty. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and you feel free to contact me if you have any um, tax concerns, you need help with your taxes, tax preparation, tax planning. You can contact me at www.christianandbrooks.com bookkeeping. Alrighty, see you next time.